Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get set up with Lua, the programming language. So first thing we're going to do, there's going to be a lot of steps here, but the first thing is we're going to go to lua.org, which is the website of the Lua programming language. And it's a very good language to learn as a starter, you know, as a beginning programmer. So let's go to download. And the way we're going to get this is going to be over here. Um, it says if you don't have the time or inclination to compile Lua yourself, that's kind of an advanced thing to do. You would have to set up a compiler for another programming language, and I don't want to do that. Uh, we're going to so we're going to click on get a binary, and let's go down here to whatever the most recent um, the most recent releases. So this looks like Lua 5.4.0 release two. So I'm going to click on that. And it takes me to this SourceForge web, web page and download latest version sounds good. So this is 406 kilobytes. That's um, so in case you don't know what a kilobyte is, well, uh, we have bits, which are zeros and ones. And yeah, we're going to hit uh, save file here. So we have bits, which are zeros and ones. If you take eight bits together, like 11110000, that would be called a byte. And if you have about a thousand bytes, that's a, called a kilobyte. So this is around 406,000 bytes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, now that I've downloaded this, I'm gonna to go to the folder where it was downloaded, which is the downloads folder. And the easy way to get there is right click, open containing folder. Um, and we have that I, some stuff here from earlier. Okay. So Lua 5.4, so let's do this. I'm going to right click, extract all. And what I'm going to do is select a different folder. So I'm going to click browse and I'm going to make sure I'm in my documents folder, which I am. Um, if not, just click there. And I'm going to make a new folder. So I think I right click here, new folder, and I'm gonna call it Lua. So we're going to be coming back to this location in a little bit, but once I have selected that folder, I can, um, once I've created it and made sure that it's highlighted, I can hit select folder. And now I can extract. So in case you don't know, a zip file is basically uh, some computer data that's been compressed. So made to take up fewer bits by taking advantage of various patterns in the bits you don't need to know that, but extracting it is important to do whenever you download a zip file. Okay, so we've got this Lua folder in our documents, and in there should be something like these files here. The main one that we're going to use is Lua 5.4, and we could even double click it and run it. And um, it looks like Windows Defender considers this a possible threat. If you got it the way that I showed you, it shouldn't be a threat. So we should be able to click on um, this more info and then click run anyway. And we're just going to test this out here by typing print parentheses, quotes, hello world, close the quotes, close the parentheses, and it should just say hello world right there. You should be able to do something like five plus three and it'll do eight. Okay, so we're not going to use um, this way of directly running the Lua program because we want to be able to write a whole file and run the file. So in order to do that, most conveniently, we're going to need an IDE. So this is the second big step of this process. So the IDE that it might not be the perfect IDE for using Lua, but it's pretty good uh, and I've been using it. So it's called Genie. So let's just open up tab and type G-E-A-N-Y, and we're going to go to Genie Home, and it looks like download Genie 1.36 is here. So that's good. Um, let's see, we want the releases and Windows. If you're on a Windows computer, you want this one right here, GPG Signature. This is like if you were wanting to confirm that this file was, you know, matched the one that came from, you know, that was signed, something like that. I, I usually don't worry about those as long as the website that I go to has, you know, has a good reputation. So I, I trust this one. So we should be able to hit save file here. And once that downloads, 
we can click here and this time we don't need to extract it we can just click on that and this should install for us okay so we can hit next uh, GNU general public license is a very common uh, free software license and basically it says that if you were to modify the program you know the genie program and sell it or distribute it you would have to make your source code available to others but we're not going to you know most likely you're not going to do that so it's just nice that it basically keeps the software free for you to use all right i don't think we need to tinker with any of these check marks so we can just click next 76 megabytes a megabyte is a million bytes so this is around 76 million bytes and this should be okay for the destination folder so we sh should be able to just hit next and then install and then it's going to do a little thing here and there we have that i'm not going to click on this box although I, you could but i'm just going to show you how you would run it from the desktop so i can click finish i can go down to the corner here uh, click on that corner to show the desktop and then here we have genie all right so that is the second big step done so we got lua binaries downloaded we've got genie up and running um, let's actually make a, a very simple lua program so we're going to have two dashes here to make a comment a comment is a line that doesn't do anything in the program it's just a note to the person reading the code so I'm going to write my first Lua program by Mr. W. Uh, so this is, this is not my first Lua program. So I'll put a little question mark there. Any case, print hello world, just like we did before. Okay. So in order to run this program, a few things need to be in place. And it's not going to be so simple the first time, but once everything's all set up, it should go pretty easily, smoothly. So I'm going to save this program, save as, and I want to find my documents folder. So you might need to hunt around a little bit. It should be under your username and then look for documents. And now we've found it, but we have, um, we're going to need to make a folder so let's click on create folder and let's call this Lua-Programs. Notice that I don't put a space in there. Usually I, I don't put spaces in the names of folders or the names of files. It just, to me, seems like asking for trouble. The name of the file, we're gonna call it uh, Lua test dot L-U-A. So whenever you're saving a Lua program, it's important to put that dot lua or dot lua uh, all lowercase so that the operating system recognizes it as a lua file and and genie will also recognize it as a lua file okay so if i were to try to run this here's how i would try it it's not going to work uh, i would go to build execute and it doesn't work okay so first thing i would do is set build commands and i think i did this earlier so if you downloaded Lua and it was the same Lua 5.4 that we saw earlier, then you want to just make sure that that says Lua 5.4 and not just plain Lua. So that should be one little thing. But um, the problem is that, you know, what's preventing this from running right now is that the um, when Genie tries to run Lua 5.4, the operating system does not know that we downloaded Lua and that we put it in that Lua folder and all that type of stuff. So we have to do one more rather intricate step. Okay, so hold on to your seats, here we go. Uh, we're gonna go here and let's type control panel. Hope this is the best way to do it. Um, and let's go to system and security and we're going to find system and we're going to go to advanced system settings they really make this uh, seem like a huge deal so what we're doing is we're going to configure the path so the path if you're interested in knowing this the path is where the operating system all the different places the operating system looks when it's trying to run a program 
So let's just basically not worry about that too much. But we want to go to Advanced tab here under System Properties and click on Environment Variables. Select Path, almost there, really close. And we're going to click on Edit. And so what we want to do is add a new thing to the path. So we click on New. And to find the location, we're going to click Browse. And remember, we install, uh, we downloaded the first thing was that Lua 5.4. It came up like with um, some other files, and we put it in the Lua folder. So we need to find that Lua folder. So let's see. They don't make it easy here. So you may need to hunt around, but you can click on your username probably and go to Documents. And then we want the one that's just called Lua because Lua programs is our programs that we write so when you make a new program you're going to put it in that folder and we're not really going to mess with this one we're just going to leave that alone it has the lua binaries in there so make sure the folder says lua here you can hit ok and then you should see something a little bit like this c colon forward slash users is probably and then obviously you're going to most likely have a different username and then documents slash lua so you could have also just typed that in but if this looks good definitely don't want to delete any of that other stuff because that could theoretically cause problems it probably would cause problems so don't delete those other ones so let's hit ok and just hit ok to everything and get all this stuff out of the way and we should be able to finally go to build execute and it doesn't work still and there's a very silly reason for that i have to press a key silly reason is you have to restart uh, genie apparently so if we had done the steps in a little bit of a different order then we wouldn't have run into that so let's just do build execute and it says hello world perfect press any key to continue so there you go what I would do when I wanted to write a Lua program let's just imagine I opened up genie and it looked like this I would go to new um, let's just click new and then you can put your name and the date at the top um, let's see uh, and if you want to explain what the program is and then you put your little bit of Lua code hello again by the way I use control for, uh, and the forward mouse wheel to zoom in you can also use control plus but again anytime you make that Lua file you probably want to save it inside that Lua programs folder that we made earlier and if you have a lot of programs in there you could even make a, a folder inside there but it's probably best to keep things fairly well organized so what you do is select that folder and then give it a good name so like Lua test 2 that's an adequate name it always end it with dot lua lowercase so dot lua and that way it will recognize it as a lua file and when you want to run it just build execute f5 and there it is and you can press spacebar to close that and if i press f5 does it run it so i'm right now i'm in some function mode or whatever but maybe if you press f5 it'll just actually run it for you so if you're having some trouble make sure the build command says lua 54 or whatever it was when you downloaded it if you recall we put it in that folder there that we were just talking about so make sure if yours says like lua 55 or something like that just make sure that the build commands when you go to build and set build commands make sure the execute um, the name here before that crazy percent f thing in quotes just make sure that this matches um, this thing right there all right so i regret that it's so complicated to set this up but the good news is once you set it up you should be good to go without really much fuss at all uh, when you want to actually write some code so let me know if there's any questions thank you for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for more videos on how to actually get uh, you know write programs in Lua all right take care